so glad you I came. Are you glad you came? Amen. Well, let's get this thing started. Let me declare as your pastor that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with every one of you. And also with you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the people who have gathered here together. Lord, many are on the internet watching us today too, Lord. I pray that you would bring us together in one accord. Lord, I sense a spirit of unity here. I sense a spirit of peace. Lord, I sense that we're going to collectively join our faith and reach out to touch the hem of your garment today, Lord. We're never going to be the same. 
Never again will we be the same. When we leave here today because the word of God is going to change our hearts. Lord, our fellowship that we have with one another is going to change our walk in this life because we have each other. And Lord, the singing, the worship is going to go straight to your glory and honor today. And Lord, you rain down on us. Lord, when we rain up the praise, Lord, you rain down your presence on us. And we're so looking forward to that today. What you're going to do, Lord Jesus, you are so good. This is about you. It's not about us. Lord, the next hour belongs to you. And Lord, we bless you. We praise you. We thank you for it. It's in your name that we pray. And we say together, amen, amen. and amen. 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 Somebody give us another song. Tell me you got one. Well, we had America the Beautiful. <laughs> America the Beautiful. Yeah, but we can do uh, 697. 697 in the uh, Methodist hymnal? Yes. 697 back in your blue book.
minutes, so we'll just take us a little break and get our breath. And while we're taking a break, it's not really a break. We're going to talk to the Lord. We're going to talk to each other. We're going to hear what God is doing in your midst. I've got a couple of things I'll mention, but I'm going to open it up to you first. Tell us what God's doing in your life this week. What you want him to do. Make it my <laughs> I'm glad he brought this lady back to us today. Miss Amy, yeah. give her a big hand, folks. Come on. Yeah. We were with you. We yeah. talked about you last week, and so we couldn't find her phone number. I think we somehow, all of us, figured out we didn't have it. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> I found it. And yeah, I was was so, yeah. Yeah. so glad. So glad. It just matter of day when you came in. Tell us what God is doing in your life. Um, well, I have to point out that I ended up getting a job because maybe we work weekends. I only get to go home every other weekend, so I had to go home instead of go to church. Well, I ended up losing that job. And I ended up getting a job that is from 5 to 3 o'clock Monday through Thursday. And um, so I'm off on the weekend. So I can come to church. Amen. 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 God working in your life. Yes. It wasn't the worst day of your life when you got fired, was it? No. I was, I was, I <laughs> it may have felt like it. I did not expect it at all. But like, you didn't know that God had something better for you. He had to take you out of that situation to get you into yes. a better situation. I, I don't know if it's better. It's hot. Well. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a lot more peaceful. And um, the people there are a lot nicer than other places. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yes. We pray God will order your past angel and... It's got great things for you. Great things for you. We keep we've been praying for you every week, and glad you're back with us. Thank you, Glenda, yeah. for finding me. For Who else has something for us today? <laughs> yes. I need to get fun in a catering. <laughs> Line folks have an induction, and all that, and I called around, and the master's table was closed for the whole week. Magnolia's closed for the whole week. Um, I've been trying to get hold of Savvy Cakes, and he wouldn't call me back. This is Thursday night. Oh my goodness. The barbecue place down here at Joe's Catering. Uh, Eddie's? No, the one at Bogart. Oh, good. Because I'm Fresh air. Fresh air. Fresh air. Oh, uh, Strickland's. 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 Where's that one? Strickland's. It's the same. Strickland's. Strickland's. Oh, Strickland's. Just the No, no, Strickland's, not Strickland's. Over there by Sam's, just before you get to Sam's. Oh. Just past the Texas sign. Like going to Bogart. Oh, oh, it's across the street from Nails. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where that car lot is. Or, yeah. Yeah, the restaurant right there. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, let's pray for Jan to be able to find the right person. They, they were good, uh, yeah. good yeah. Christian yeah. friends of mine. Do you know what Russell and Sheila at the old house? Do they do it? Tom and I, she might work you out something. Mm -hmm. She has a, for us, a party. Yeah. They do it for our family. Anybody? Has any suggestions or ideas? Get with Jan. We've got to send somebody quick. So. Yeah, quick. Amen. <laughs> Last week I failed to read this card. It was real sweet from Ms. Mary. Uh, it said, uh, Mount Sinai Baptist Church friends, thank, thank you for using the fellowship hall. And they gave us a donation of $50 last week. Very sweet of her to remember us. I didn't read the card. I wanted to be sure to read it. I had another card today. I have not read it yet, but I have it here somewhere. Uh, keep yeah. talking, folks. Y'all, somebody, here it is. No, it's not. I, put it in, I think I put it in my songbook as a marker. Go ahead and talk to me, folks. Somebody give me a prayer request. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, oldest grandson turned 11 this week. Yeah. Wow. I'm getting, they grow fast. I'm they? getting older, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. Prayer request. Pray that I'll find a place to print whenever I get out of this program. Yeah. We had a donation from... Cameron's other grandmother of fifty dollars. She said she doesn't do gun GoFundMe, but she sent us a check. Very nice. Towards the GoFundMe thing. Well, my, grand, my grandson's turned uh, thirty-two yesterday. Wow. And then my daughter, his mother, turned fifty-two on the first. <laughs> first day on the first day. <laughs> Y'all pray for my co-worker, um, Robin Oliver. She has gotten COVID and um, even though COVID has watered itself down to be less severe, for people such as herself, she has lupus um, and it's hitting her very hard. Her husband said that um, she's lost a little bit of a max record in her cough
a call and ask me anyway. So, um, it kind of started I found it. It's from Ginger Vickery. Who, I'll tell you something else about her in just a few moments. Ginger's going to join the church this morning by phone. That's going to be a first, isn't it? She is not able to get here and negotiate the steps yet. But she's very eager to join us, and I'm sure she's watching us right now. But we made a plan last night where I'm going to call her up, and she's watching. We're going to talk to her over the phone. Is that okay with everybody? All yeah. right. She says, Dear Pastor Mark, Pat, and State of United Methodist Church family, thank you so very much for the Instacart e-gift card. I was honored and grateful to receive it and humbled. Then I, when I found out I was injured, I prayed for the right people and the help that I would need. You truly bless me and I appreciate your support during this time. May God richly bless our church. Then I, when I watched the services, I participated in singing in prayer as if I were in church and I prayed for you. Love, Ginger Vickery. Ginger, we love you. We're gonna get you as a member, official member today. We already, already felt like she was a member. But it's a very important thing. It's a very special thing when somebody says, I want to join, I want to be part of this church. And then we become one. And God just uses that so richly in our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go ahead and give me some more prayer requests and then we'll talk some more about Ginger. Pray for Mike and Dino on their travels. Okay, where are they, they going to see kids? St. Louis. But oh, that's right. The restaurant was opening this week. Yeah. Mike and Nino's. We will pray for their traveling. She may be watching today, so I pray for that restaurant just to go wild. I tell you what, that food looks good. It, those big hot dogs that guy's making. Oh, man, me and Angie were talking about that the other day. I wish we had a place like that around here. But uh, if it goes big, maybe she'll open one here in Statham. Who knows? You know, when I first moved to Winder 30 years ago, whatever it was, 40, that was one of my dreams was to open a hot dog place because in all Albany, they got a Jimmy's hot dog, and it's just big standing in line. I've heard of that place. In yes. Albany. I hear it. And then, and that's what, they made a little hot dog shop, cheap, just run in and get a hot dog, yeah. Yeah. It never happened. Lord, it, it would be, it would go, I think it would go up crazy around here, so you're still time, Jan. That's all right, I'll my place. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Missy. I have a paper sign. Mm -hmm. And I pray just the paper signs. Mm -hmm. Pray for my daddy, mm -hmm. and kind of my church, and Jan, and you, and get money, and a prayer. Chet, how you doing, brother? It's good to have you back with us today. I know you're with us in the truck every week online, but it's nice to be able to see you. Is the Lord blessing you? Is the Lord blessing your life? So far, keeping you safe out there in Florida for every week, so keep you safe travels. Yes, Craig. We're going to have a big get together at my house tomorrow with my family. Yeah. Uh, pray everything goes well. Very nice. Nobody, nobody has an injury. Nobody does anything stupid. <laughs> hey, watch this, right? Yeah. Praise report. Most of the girls have been in their vehicle and moving forward in their life with recovery. Uh -huh. And then they request that all of them be able to succeed in their recovery. Angel and friends. That's what yes. I was saying. Angel and her friends. What is the name of that recovery place you are at? R-W-R-R. Richard C. Wilson Recovery Restaurant. R-C-W-R-R-R-W-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-R-
as we normally do with the pastoral prayer and then the Lord's Prayer together. So everyone, join me as we seek the Lord at this time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. We love you. Bless you. Somebody just speak his name aloud. Speak his praises if you're so moved. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You're so good. So good. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. For your guidance. Yes, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Somebody else want to thank him? Speak out of praise and thanksgiving. It's so powerful when you share it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, I thank you so much for the power and prayer, Lord. And when we come together, we share, we care for each other. God, it's so powerful. Lord, we can pray alone. I love to seek your face with, in my own silence. But, Lord, when I come together with my friends, oh, Lord, we agree on things. And, Lord, we reach out and, and it touches you, Lord. I know that it does from your word and from experience I've seen in my life. Lord, we come to you collectively as a body today telling you, first of all, Jesus, we worship you. We love you. Oh, we magnify your name, Lord Jesus Christ. You're worthy to receive praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving. And state of the United Methodist Church, we lift you up this day, Lord Jesus. Oh, you're a king of kings and Lord of lords. And you thought enough of us that you came to this earth. You became like us. You died on a cross volitionally, Lord. You were buried and you rose again. And you are seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And from there, you're going to come back judge the living and the dead. Lord, I'm so thankful that we call you our Savior and we call you our friend. Oh, Lord, we bring our requests as you told us to bring them before the throne of grace humbly today and boldly. Lord, I ask you to touch the people that we've talked about here, Lord. Robin Oliver, Angie's friend and co-worker, God, with the COVID and different health complications. Oh, lift, we lift her up today, God. Touch her, I pray. Heal her. Raise her up, Lord Jesus. Touch her, I pray. Lord, I pray that Jan would find the right caterer for her event, Lord, as she's uh, searching uh, at this time. Lord, I believe you've got the right person out there, lead her in the right direction, God, and it would be a, just a great success and that she would get what she needs. Lord, I lift up Angel. I thank you for bringing her back to us today, Lord. God, she's such a blessing, such a wonderful, wonderful inspiration to all of us, Lord. What you're doing in her life is just amazing, and God, we... We love you and we, 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 we bless you for what you're doing. And Lord, for all those girls that she's there with, God, they're, they're all in state of transition, God. And I believe you've got great things for every one of them, Lord, as they will seek to serve you and as they yield their lives to you. First of all, Lord, I pray that they would yield their lives to the power of the Holy Spirit. They would understand this unique time that they have, God, that you are calling, you are calling. And Lord, you guide where you provide and you provide where you guide. Lord, I thank you that you provided Angel a brand new job, God. When the other one uh, didn't work out, Lord, you had another plan. And God, you have her there for a purpose. God, it's not just random. It's not just a regular job. It's a, it's a calling on her life, God, that you walk with her everywhere she goes. And Lord, I pray that she would be a blessing, that you would continue to use her. And Lord, you would bless her family, God, that you would bless all around her. Lord, I call her to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Lord, and she's putting on the whole armor of God, I pray that you would equip her. Lord, as she goes forth, let her be the, the one to bless these other girls that live there with her, God, the ones who, who need encouragement, Lord, the ones who need to be strong. And God, I pray that you would continue to do great work among her and her friends and family. Lord, for Michael and Ninos out there on the road today, God, I pray that you would bless them, keep them, Lord, and keep them safe. We thank you for them. Lord, I think about Ninos' brother who is open in that great restaurant in St. Louis, Missouri today, Lord. And God, I just pray you make him wildly successful beyond his dreams, Lord, beyond Ninos' dreams. I know she's put a lot of prayer, a lot of effort into to helping her brother with this business. And God, I just pray for your, your favor and your blessing as he would seek to turn that business over to you, Lord, that he would allow you to bless it by allowing you to guide him, Lord, in Jesus' name. I speak blessings over Nino's brother. Lord, I think about Valentina, her niece, who she brings to us in prayer so often, Lord. I pray that you continue to work in Valentina's life, Lord, and Giorgio and those others that Nino's has us pray for. And Lord, for Nino's, I know that her feet and knees hurt, God. I pray that you would bless her, God. Take her pain, Lord Jesus, that you would 
give her relief from her pain, God, and give her strength for this journey that they're on today. I bless them in Jesus' name. For Patricia, Lord, Patricia's not with us today. God, I bless her. Ask you to touch her. Ask you to raise her up, Lord. Not sure if she's traveling or, or just out of pocket today, but Lord, we love her so much and we bless her. I think about Ginger, God. She's there at home and she's about to join our church. God, I thank you for her. Lord, I pray that her time of rehabilitation would go well, Lord, that her bones and her her meniscus and different things that have been injured, God, that they would heal rapidly, Lord, that it would even amaze the doctors, God, because you're the healer, Lord Jesus. We love doctors and we love nurses. We thank you for them, but Lord, you are our healer and we acknowledge you as such, Lord, and I speak your healing grace and mercy over Ginger Victory now in Jesus' name. Thank you for bringing Chet to us today and keeping him safe out there on the road at all times, Lord. I pray for Misty's whole family, God. Her prayer request is that you touch her family. God, that you would, would draw them very near to you, Lord. And I also pray for this doctor's appointment coming up that the source of her foot pain would be isolated, Lord, and that she would receive the medical attention that she needs, Lord, and that you would just take her pain. By your stripes, Lord, we are healed. Continue to work in Glenda's life, Lord. I know that there are certain health concerns there still. Lord, as we trust you daily, Lord, as we speak, you as the, speak to you as the Lord of our lives, the shepherd of our souls, Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful that we can say, by your stripes, we are healed. Receive it, dear congregation. Receive his healing even now in Jesus' name. Lord, for Linda Aaron over at Iris Place, I pray blessings upon her life. God, I know she's listening to us today. I bless her in Jesus' name. For others listening online, Judy Mercilliot, Lord, and um, uh, Ann may be listening at home online today. Lord, I ask you to bless Ann and, and, uh, and all of her family, God, everyone there at the Young Household. Lord, I thank you for this big get-together they're having on the 4th. God, I pray that you bless them and give them a safe wonderful time together as a family and lord for dane and for jadel and for miss uh, willene and others who may be watching out there today lord blessings and peace and grace and mercy we pray in their lives in jesus name and lord as we seek you further we pray as you taught us to pray in the lord's prayer together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen and amen. Let's go ahead and take up our offering and then we'll bring Ginger into the church. Um, anybody, let's see, Tony, would you grab our offering for us today? Anyone need Tony to stop by your seat this morning? Anyone need Tony to stop? I mean, Tony on Tony. There we go. Tony goes to Tony. All right. Thank you, brother. Go ahead, Tony. Praise God for whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. for a new church member. Amen. I think this is awesome. Let me get my phone. Let's give her a call. Ginger, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. I told her, I said, we have a, we need to get us a big screen in here where we can watch people. And she said, well, sometimes I don't want to be seen on Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know what you mean. We won't put you on the big screen, but we can talk to you. We'll it's sure talk to you. It's in the phone sometimes. It's in the phone. It's in the Got so much on your phone, you can't make, you can't figure out how to make a phone call sometimes. Okay, let's go to the speaker phone. Okay. Uh, 
Miss Ginger, you there? Hello? Hello, Miss Ginger. Good morning, Pastor Mark. How are you? I'm doing good. You're, you're talking to the whole church today. We got you on speakerphone. Everybody just great, just excited for you to join our church today. I told them that we were going to get you on by phone, and they think that's pretty neat. So, uh, how are you doing this morning? I'm excited. <laughs> well, I am so glad. I am so glad. We miss having you here, but I understand that during the rehab process, sometimes steps can be a little bit tricky, and sitting still for a certain amount of time can be a little bit tricky. So, we just are glad you're joining us online. Can you see everybody okay? Okay, I, uh, let me see if this. I'm gonna see if this microphone will go out there so I can get you to take a look at everybody and see who's all here. Okay, that's yeah, that'd be easier. All right, I'm going to go down here to the floor where I can see everybody and turn the camera around just a little bit so that you can see who you're talking to today. I see it. <laughs> All right, see all those good folks, Ginger? Uh-huh. All right, I'm going to ask. She says, hey, everybody. Hey, Ginger. I'm going to ask everyone to take your handle and turn to page 33. That's where we're going to be coming from today. This is our way of welcoming new members, bringing them into the church. It's a covenant that we have with those who would join us, with, it's for baptism or for joining the church. And it's a way that we pledge our love and our support to each other in a formal way. And we'll always remember this. This is an important moment. It's not just a religious ritual that we go through. It means something. And I'm so glad to be able to do this today. I read over these with Miss Ginger last night on the phone, so she knows what's coming. We're not blindsided or anything like that. So I want you to join me, if you will. First of all, I need someone who would recommend Miss Ginger Vickery for membership in the State of the United Methodist Church. There's Miss Beverly, imagine that. <laughs> Miss Beverly, tell us what you'd like to do. I present Ginger Vickery, who comes to this congregation from the Statham Baptist Church. She is now a member of Statham First Baptist Church right across the street, and she loves that church, but she said she feels like God is directing her here. Is that right, Miss Ginger? That's true, very true. Amen, and she says that God, she just feels like the Spirit of God has directed her here. So I'm glad to have her recommended for membership in church today. Turn over to page 34. I'm going to ask Miss Ginger a few questions here. We've already gone over these. And I'm going to ask her, Ginger Vickery, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Yes. Do you accept the freedom and the power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves yes i do do you confess jesus christ as your savior put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your lord in union with the church which christ has opened to people of all ages nations and races yes i do okay now we are going to talk to the church Look over there on page 35, if you will. Do you, as Christ's body of the church, do you reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? I do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this lady who is now before us in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this person with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Did you hear all that, Miss Ginger? I did. I'm getting teary-eyed. That was the church's commitment to you as we receive you today. Now I'll address the entire church, including you, Miss Ginger. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, at this point, I will say it is a joy to have Miss Ginger Vickery as the newest member of State of the United Methodist Church. Welcome, Miss Ginger. Give her a big hand. Amen. Amen. You're one of ours now. You're one of ours, and we love you, and we bless you, and as soon as you can, we look, we look forward to seeing you walk through these doors again, but we know you're with us in spirit and online, so you keep uh, resting and healing, and let us know how we can help you, Miss Ginger. We love you very much. Y'all give her some love again. All right. We'll let you go now, okay? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. I forgot the most important part. Let's play a player blessing over her, folks. My wife called me on that. I'm going to ask her to pray. She, uh, she saved me on that one. Heavenly Father, we just lift up uh, Ginger before you today, God, with much joy, excitement, and gratitude, Lord God, that you have done work in her life and in her heart, Lord God, and you brought her to us, Lord Jesus, to serve with us, alongside of us, as we all work together for your kingdom. Lord God, I pray, Father, right now in that room where Ginger sits, that the power of the Holy Spirit will be upon her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. Lord God, let she feel the healing power of Jesus as you touch her and complete the work that you began in her and complete the work that the doctors have done in her body. Lord God, bring her about the full and complete and total restoration in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray that you would give her uh, wisdom and knowledge and peace and grace, Lord God, as she reaches out to those around her. Give her creative ways to serve you, Lord God, and to serve her community and her church, Lord God. And I pray, Father, most also that you would let the love of Jesus and the love of this congregation be extended to her in such a way that she would know that she is loved, she is cared for, and she is valued. She is important because she is your child. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for it, God. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, my dear wife. Not only did she save, the, save me from not having the prayer, she did the beautiful prayer. Thank you so much. Uh, let's sing a special. Sing. You, want to, you want to do another song? Let's do another congregation first. Uh, 717. 717. And then we'll do the special.
Well, salute and praise, actually. Uh, I'm taking care of <laughs> 15 years. 15 years disabled veterans, you know. So, um, it's been about eight years ago that I actually sit down and while I was at a veteran's house, uh, I pinned down the words to this song and it's called Salute of Praise. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> I didn't run down. Let me see. soundtrack was done at the Lee Davis studio. Okay. I saw it. I appreciate all the those musicians do. Put up with Lee Davis. The engineer. Salute and pray. All gave some, some gave all for the red, white, and blue. This land of freedom we call home. Oh, for so long some live and some die for the red, white, and blue. We stand tall, we have our pride, and thanks to these we have our lives. And God, we trust our flag. amazing. Thank you so much, Tony, for sharing your wonderful talent with us. What a blessing. What a blessing. I want to preach to you just for a few minutes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. Why didn't you guess that? You all knew where I was going this morning, didn't you? Yeah. We've been on Ephesians for about three, three and a half months now, I believe. And we're going to finish up here really quickly. This is the last two of the uh, weapons of our warfare that we're going to talk about. It's the fourth sermon that I preached to you on the armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6. You know what? I didn't bring the scripture with me. Let me see this Bible. May I see your Bible? This is the 
this is somebody's Bible here. Ephesians chapter 6. I want to read that section one more time. It's hard to use somebody else's Bible. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's just read the whole part there. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. That's verse 10. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, we take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having gird your loins about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Listen to this, verse 17 is where we're going today. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. Dear friends, this is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your Word. God, give us utterance. Give us revelation knowledge over the next few moments, Lord. Let us have the, the plain and simple truth, God, that we can put into practice in this evil day, Lord. You have designed us to stand. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give us utterance. Give us revelation. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen and amen. If you can keep your wits when all about you, all others are losing theirs and blaming it on you, the world will be yours and everything in it. What's more, you'll be a man, my son. Remember that old poem we learned it in middle school? Rudyard Kipling. If you can keep your head, your wits, when all about you are losing theirs, blaming it on you. We're in a battle today, folks. Yeah. People lose their wits in battle. I've never been in a battle. And I dare say that even you guys who were in the military, you may have had training exercises and you simulated battle. But I'm told that when those guns start to roar and those machine guns start going off and tanks start rolling in, it will absolutely scramble your mind. I've got a friend who was in Desert Storm and he described it to me very vividly and living in the desert in the sand for months on end and then pressed into battle. And it is a powerful, powerful play for your mind. Sometimes you, there's so much smoke, there's so much fire, so much noise, you don't know who's the enemy and who's your friend. There's people who are often killed by friendly fire because it's just such a mass of confusion. Well, I want to liken what we have in the spiritual realm today. And it's always been this way, but we know about today. We're standing right here in the United States of America today in the midst of spiritual battle. Sometimes it's hard to know what's even out there. There's so much cloud, there's so much smoke, there's so much fire on both sides, and you can't sometimes hear who's who and who's what. But we've got to listen for the power of the Holy Spirit. He is inside of us, dear folks. He has equipped us with these weapons of our warfare, and they are not carnal. They are powerful and they're mighty. They'll tear down strongholds in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, He's equipped us to go out. I love this metaphor of the armor. This has blessed my life. I hope it's blessed yours as we've gone through these pieces that Paul saw in the person of a Roman soldier. A killing machine, a, a uh, Navy SEAL or an Army Ranger would be in a modern day equivalent. This guy who was dressed and armored for battle, they were ubiquitous. They were everywhere. Paul saw them and he knew that people understood this armament that they wore in the Greco-Roman world. And he began to speak by the power of the Holy Spirit and equate it to what God wants to equip us with for this spiritual battle. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's look at the helmet of salvation. You know, a few months ago, we talked about that heart-mind connection that God has designed us with. And it's no, nowhere more evident than in the actual act of God saving us. When we come to Jesus, we come not by our own power, not by our own decision, but by the call of the Holy Spirit. We're lost in our transgressions, Paul tells us. We're so lost, we're dead. Yeah. And we talked about that word dead in our trespasses. Doesn't just mean you know, just kind of asleep or not paying attention. 
It means dead. If you look at the Greek word, it talks about rotting flesh. It talks about necrosis. It talks about a rotting corpse. That's what He likens our unsaved soul to. But then the power of the Holy Spirit comes to us by God's express will and speaks the power of the gospel into us. It may be from a friend. It may be from a stranger. It may be through circumstances in our life. But He gets our attention and He quickens our soul and He wakes us up and we stand up and we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. There is a heart and mind connection. There is a major connector that goes here to here and here to here. Right. It connects the two. What does it say in Romans 10, 9, and 10? The Word is near you. It is in your mouth and it is in your heart. That is the message of faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. You don't have to do a certain amount of ritual. You don't have to come to church every Sunday. You don't have to uh, do so many good deeds. You don't have to give so much money. You believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth because your mouth is not going to confess something, truly confess it, that's not in your heart. And you're not going to be able to say that. Anybody can say Jesus is Lord. But are you convinced of that in your heart? Has the Holy Spirit changed you, changed your mind? That heart-mouth connection, you are saved. He goes on to say, for it is with your heart that you believe and you're justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and you are saved. You see, it's all connected. When we're born again, our spirit is renewed. We're made new. We are literally brought from death to life. We were dead in our trespasses. We hear the voice of the Holy Spirit as He quickens us, makes us able to hear. He gives us ears to hear. There's this connection and it takes place and it all happens. I don't pretend to truly understand it. I know what the Word says and I know what He did in my life. You're smiling at me and you know what He did in your life too as well. You remember that day. You remember that day when that connection was made. Through the preaching of the Word, it may have been a circumstance in your life. It may have been through the witness of someone you maybe knew or didn't know that shared the Gospel with you. There's that moment. That moment in time. It may take some time to build it or to, to actually know what happened. And sometimes it's like a sudden explosion for some people, but you become convinced in your mind of what you know to be true in your heart. I'll say that again. You become convinced in your mind of what you already know to be true in your heart. And that mouth and heart connection is made. Mind, mouth, heart, it's all connected. And the Word of God, the promises of God, in Greek it's called soteria or sozo, the salvation of God, the salvific way that He comes into our lives by the power of the Gospel, it gets personal. It comes to you. You understand that God has made you aware of your dire spiritual circumstances and your condition, and you agree with God. You essentially agree with God about my lost condition, and you place yourself in His arms of mercy. You understand that He has shown you that He has the solution for you. I agree with God. I am lost and I call to Him for my salvation. Your heart can be influenced. Your emotions can come and go. But your salvation lasts forever, dear folks. We're in a battle. We're in a battle. And sometimes our human emotions, our human mind grows frail. Sometimes we get scared. Sometimes we get chill bumps running up and down our spine. We think that God is nowhere to be found. We feel lost. We feel alone. But we know we know, I know that Jesus saved me. I know when He came to me and He revealed Himself to me. I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against that day. Right. He is able. It's not about my ability. It's about His ability. That is what we have to know. And that's what He wants to protect. He says, take the helmet. The helmet of salvation. Of salvation. You belong to God, dear children. If you know Jesus, you belong to God. That's an objective statement. That is fact. That is truth. And we constantly need to be reminded of that. We don't belong to this world. We don't belong to the values of this world. We need to be reminded that this is our faith in action. We keep our emotions in check by the helmet of salvation. 
Yeah. The helmet of salvation. When our heart begins to fear, when our flesh begins to fail, our feet may begin to tremble. The helmet of salvation covers my mind and I know that Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Lord. It may look dark right now, but dear friends, He loves me. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. He has nothing but good things for me and I am His. He is mine in the Beloved. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 2 Corinthians 10.3, Paul said, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not ordinary. They're not of this earth. They're not physical in nature. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, the helmet of salvation will cover our mind, will cover our thinking processes. And I want you to understand that God will protect us. Yeah. God will protect us with the helmet of salvation. Ephesians 6, 13, he says, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. That's the new... Uh, New Century Version that speaks of the old King James where it says, and having done all, stand. Plant your feet. We talked about those gospel shoes that cause us to be able to plant our feet like golf spikes where we will not be moved. We will not be moved. Have you ever encountered something that grieved your spirit? Something that was on a very deep level and you just knew it wasn't right. Something may be wrapped in a very pretty package. And yes, it may even somehow kind of sort of makes sense rationally the numbers work the plan may make sense but yet you knew down deep there's something wrong with this yeah. there is something wrong with this this is not right you hear danger you hear warning folks that is the power of the holy spirit that's what the armor of god is doing for us in our lives protecting our mind protecting us from the danger that satan he can wrap things up so beautifully Oh, he can make us think that this is the way the world is going. This is the way we need to get with the times. This is the way that people are thinking nowadays. And that old way of thinking, even just 20, 30 years ago, is completely outdated. This is a new day, a new age. And it can be so appealing. It can be, oh, it's about love. It's about acceptance. It's about inclusion. And it's about justice. And while all those things are good, God's word is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. The flower fades, the grass withers, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. It's not going to change. Right. He's not going to change. His character is not going to change. He is love. He is peace. But he is not going to change the things that anger him. The things that he speaks of in his word are not going to change. The armor protects us. The armor will shield us. The helmet of salvation tells us who God is and it tells us who we are under Him and it shows us that we can walk with Him and we will not be moved. We will not be moved. You know you've heard that down deep inside. Thank you for that helmet of salvation. It's what the armor does for us. The armor allows us to walk with Jesus, listen to the Holy Spirit, and to be protected and shielded from all the attacks of the enemy. It gives us not just a defensive posture, but it gives us the boldness and the confidence to take the battle to the enemy. Oh, I can't get that cross strongly enough. I think I've preached that every time i preached on one of these pieces of armor. We're not supposed to just wait for him to come to us. We're not just supposed to be cowering down in some defensive posture. We're not shrinking away from the battle. We're going to be like David. The Bible said that when David went out there to meet Goliath, he issued the warning. Goliath began to mock him, began to make fun of him. They tried to put armor on David. David said, I've got my slingshot. That's all I need. This uncircumcised Philistine will fall by the name of the Holy... I think he, he didn't call him Jesus at that time. But he said, by the God of Israel, this uncircumcised Philistine will fall. And he charged that guy. He didn't wait for him to come to him. we got to get the jump on the enemy. We got to get out there and bust him in the head and not cower away and not try to make excuses, not try to make friends with him, not try to make some sort of a, a compromise. Now that's the way of politics, isn't it? Let's compromise. Let's, I'll give and you give a little bit and we'll, we'll get something right down the middle. It's not what we're called to do as Christians, dear friends. We stand on the Word of God. The Word of God is our rock. The Word of God is our truth. We will stand on the truth, not our truth, the truth yeah. of the Word of God. The armor allows us to walk with Jesus. Last two pieces. The helmet of salvation goes with the sword of the Spirit. 
I read this uh, article online. I read this site quite a bit in preparation for sermons. It has some great, great writing. It talks about the, uh, the assurance of our salvation is our impenetrable defense against anything the enemy can throw at us. Jesus said, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. The idea in this verse is that as we prepare for Satan's attacks, we must grab the helmet and buckle it on tightly. Salvation is not limited to a one-time act of the past or even a future hope. God's salvation is ongoing, an eternal state that His children enjoy in the present. When we look at the Greek language, we understand that we were saved in eternity past. We are being saved even now. One day when we see Him face to face, we will be saved. Salvation is a state of being and it is sealed with the helmet of salvation. The warfare is mental. It begins right here in our mind. Our mind is the devil's prime target. 2 Timothy 1.12, Paul said, This is why I suffer as I do. Still, I am not ashamed. For I know Him and I am personally acquainted with Him whom I have believed and I am confident, have confidence in Him and in the truth of His deity, I am persuaded beyond any doubt that He is able to guard that which I have entrusted to Him until that day when I stand before Him. That's the amplified version that speaks the fullness of what Paul was saying. Envision the helmet of salvation. It protects your thoughts, your attitude, your reasoning ability. Colossians chapter 2, Therefore, just as you receive Christ, Jesus is Lord. Continue to walk in Him rooted and built up in Him, established in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception which are based on human tradition and the spiritual forces of the world rather than on Christ. Oh, hallelujah. He's protecting our mind, folks. He's protecting our ability to reason and think in the middle of the battle. Now let's look at the final weapon, the sword of the Spirit. It goes with the helmet of salvation. He speaks of them in tandem together because one complements the other and they work together when we're in the battle. The sword of the Spirit. It's our offensive weapon. It's also a defensive weapon. Have you ever seen somebody fight with a sword? You defend yourself with a sword just as you, as you do offense with a sword. Hebrews 4.12 tells us about our sword. For the Word of God is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Basically what it means is it cuts to the chase. Folks, the Word of God does not play around. The Word of God is truth. The Word of God is, is eternal. And it speaks to every matter in our lives. It cuts all the way to the bone. And as it cuts, it heals because it causes us to grow. It grows us up in Him so that we grow together. And we, 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 we know Him. We know Him in a, a new and stronger way when we use the sword of the Spirit. The sword is both an offensive and a defensive weapon used by warriors and soldiers. In this case, it is a weapon that belongs to the Holy Spirit. We, walked, we talked last week about the futility of the excessively defensive posture. The devil can lock us up in a war and we can hold on with all of our might. We may struggle for years with the same thing over and over, the same sin that comes to us, the same temptation that comes to us, and we may struggle and struggle and struggle, and the devil may seemingly have us in a chokehold, just holding us there, just waiting for us there. He may not be able to kill us, but he can completely render us ineffective. He can destroy our testimony. He can destroy our ability to serve God. Let's go ahead and take him out. Let's stop playing with him. Get that sword out. Pull that sword. Get it out of your scabbard. It ain't going to do anything for you in your scabbard. You can go around and look big. You can look tough. But you've got to pull it out and do some good, dear friends. The sword of the Spirit, it is the Word of God. Hebrews 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us throw off every encumbrance and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Matthew 24, 35, Jesus told us, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. God's word cuts to the very bone of every situation. It will slay every lie, 
It answers every question about who God is and what my relationship with Him is like and what He wants from my life. God's Word is truth. It is the ultimate weapon against lies. And we live in a society that thrives on lies. Dear friends, God's Word will cut through the dross. It will cut through the smog. It will cut through the haze. And it will lead us into all truth. Isaiah 55, 11, He said, So my word that proceeds from my mouth it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please and it will prosper where I send it. Dear friends, we will not be able to stand in this evil day unless we know the Word of God, unless we use the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit. If we don't pull it out, and we don't start cutting some lines, we don't start cutting through some, some of the dross and some of the smoke and some of the, the chemicals that we see coming to us in this metaphorical war that we're in. I want to ask you this. Do you pull out a Swiss Army knife when you're going into battle? Is a Swiss Army knife going to do you very much good against uh, M16s and AK-47s and howitzers and all that kind of stuff? Do you sheepishly pull out a, a Swiss Army knife and enter a building when you think there might be an active shooter in that building? No. You use the biggest and the nastiest weapon that you can find. And if you have an uh, a AR-15 or an AK-47, that's what you want. When you're going into battle, when someone's attempting to take your life or the life of others, you use the force that is necessary. He has given us the ultimate weapon, the Word of God. Get to know it. Don't just bring it to church on Sunday. Don't wait for the preacher to tell you the verses. Don't wait for uh, the time when you're in the midst of battle and you're trying to think of what verse you should read or you're trying to call to your memory something you remember from vacation Bible school when you were a kid. That's all good. It may be deep inside you, but you've got to have it at your fingertips right here on your hip. It's in your scabbard. Pull it out. Be familiar with it. Know where the verses are. Rehearse it every day during the good times. Don't wait for the bullets to start flying. Don't wait for the lies to start coming. Don't wait for things to go south and, and you're groping and hunting for some way to survive. Pull out the Word of God. It's your battle sword. Your, weapon, your weaponry has to be clean, accessible, and loaded to maximum capacity with backups and spares as needed. You draw that weapon. You know how to use it. You don't tote it around and just show it to people. It's a, it's a tool. It's a tool of your battle. So in conclusion, let's think about these two things. The helmet of salvation. There's a knowledge and there's a connection of knowledge with our mouth, with our heart, with our mind. That's why God protects our mind with the helmet of salvation. Protects our head, protects our brains, our means of reasoning. We'll keep our head when the swords start flying. When the battle starts raging, we will keep our priority on Jesus and on His kingdom. We will win with Jesus Christ our head in our master in your bulletin i put those concluding points i put those in there i think back at the first look down there at the bottom in the red white and blue know your enemy don't forget this as we leave ephesians if i if i want you to remember anything from this book remember this know your enemy know yourself know your strengths and know your weaknesses because he does the enemy's been studying you for years the enemy studied your grandparents the enemy's been confusing and deceiving people for millennia he's good at it and he is thinking he's going to get you. But it's not going to happen because you're going to have the armor of God. That's why he's given us these things. That's why he's given us these things. Know your own strengths and weaknesses. Know your weapons and your armor. That's what we've been preaching. All these weapons are metaphorical and, and a beautiful, vivid picture, but they're spiritual. They're spiritual in nature. Know, most of all, your commander, your commander-in-chief, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gave himself for you, the one who leads his armies from heaven, the one who's coming again on a white horse, He's going to take vengeance on his enemies. Every wrong will be made right. We're going to see him face to face in just a few more days. I wrote this in your bulletin because every time I've ever done it, people say, I want a copy of that. I want a copy of that. So you have a copy. I'm going to read this, especially for people online, because I want them to hear this very, very vividly. I came across this a few years ago. I am a soldier. I'm a soldier, a prayer warrior, the army of my God. The Lord Jesus Christ is my commanding officer. The Holy Bible is my code of conduct. Faith, prayer, and the Word are my weapons of warfare. I have been taught by the Holy Spirit, trained by experience, tried by adversity, and tested by fire. I am a volunteer in this army, and I am enlisted for eternity. I will either retire in this army at the rapture or die in this army, but I will not get out, sell out, or be talked out. I am faithful, capable, and dependable. If my God needs me, I am there. 
I am a soldier, a prayer warrior. I am not a baby. I do not need to be pampered, petted, primed up, pumped up, picked up, or pepped up. I'm a soldier, a prayer warrior. No one has to call me, remind me, write me, visit me, entice me, or lure me. I am a soldier, a prayer warrior. I'm not a wimp. I am in place, saluting my king, obeying his orders, praising his name, and building his kingdom. I am a soldier, a prayer warrior. No one has to send me flowers, gifts, foods, cards, candy, or give me handouts. I do not need to be cuddled, cradled, cared for, or catered to. I am committed. I cannot have my feelings hurt bad enough to turn me around. I cannot be discouraged enough to turn me aside. I cannot lose enough to cause me to quit. When Jesus called me into this army, I had nothing. And if I end up with nothing, I will still come out even. I will win. My God will supply all my needs. I am more than a conqueror. I will always triumph. I can do all things through Christ. I am a soldier, a prayer warrior. Devils cannot defeat me. People cannot disillusion me. Weather cannot weary me. Sickness cannot stop me. Battles cannot beat me. Money cannot buy me. Governments cannot silence me and hell cannot handle me. I am a soldier, a prayer warrior. Even death cannot destroy me for when my commander calls me from this battlefield, he will promote me to a captain and then bring me back to rule this world with him. I am a soldier, a prayer warrior in the army, and I'm marching, claiming victory. I will not give up. I will not turn around. I am a soldier, a prayer warrior, and God has my back. Do you believe it? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for placing us in this army. Lord, teaching us how to use the weapons of our warfare. Lord, thank you, God, that in this day of lies and deception, we can know the truth. That truth makes us so free, Lord. We are agents of grace and mercy going into this world, not to condemn this world, nor did you. We go into this world to preach the good news. The good news that you love people, you call people, that you offer us eternal salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. Lord, make us soldiers in the army. Lord, teach us the truth of the armor of God. Let us walk in love and in peace, but ready for battle with the enemy of our souls. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all sing with us as we begin to end. 
thank you for America. Thank you for the freedom. Thank you for the love that we have in our church. Lord, I believe release the free people of Jesus Christ from State of United Methodist Church. You were dismissed in your name, Lord Jesus. We bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Happy Fourth of July. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Next Sunday, this character right here wants me to baptize him. Amen. Everybody okay for that? Dunk him. It's going to be over at Michael and Nino's house. I would really appreciate it. Well, I, I do that too. Let's oh, all. Let's all. Let's say he would provide the food, the meat. Michael will. Yeah, I have. But everybody. Everybody has side dishes. Side dishes. Everybody has right. side dishes. Brownies. Side dishes. <laughs> I'm going to cut the camera off. We love you, internet people. God bless you. I don't know. God bless the USA. <laughs>